So collecting a gas over water, we're here in the middle of this section. This is an illustration of one setup that can be used for collecting a gas. So here we have uh, zinc metal in hydrochloric acid. This reacts and generates hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas is going to expand and try to escape, and we're forcing it to go through this tubing under the water in this dish and allowing it to escape into this inverted cylinder. So the gas will bubble up, and as it fills up this space, it will displace the water. Now what we have up here, come on, pointer. There's the question I have. Why does it keep doing this to me? What we have up here, I'll point with my finger, what we have up here is the hydrogen gas, but it's not just the hydrogen gas. It is also water vapor because the water evaporates. Is my pointer working yet? No. Stupid thing. The water evaporates from the solution. I mean, from the, the from the, from the water evaporates from the water. How's that? The water evaporates from the water, and so we have water in the gas state, and we have hydrogen in the gas state. So, any questions about that? Anytime you collect gas over water, you're going to have a mixture of gases, water vapor and the ga gas that you're um, collecting. So remember we were talking about um, mixtures of gases and one of the things was Dalton's law of partial pressures. So let me go back here. So the pressure that this gas is exerting is the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the partial pressure of the water vapor. And the partial pressure from the water um, is known as the vapor pressure. And that will be uh, just dependent on the temperature. So we can just measure the temperature and look it up in this table. So let's do an example. A sample of acetylene is collected over water. The total gas pressure is 738 torr. The volume is 523 milliliters. At the temperature of the gas, which is 23 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure for water is 21 torr. How many grams of acetylene are collected? So sometimes it's helpful to draw a picture. So I will attempt to draw a picture. I'm going to use blue. So we can imagine a dish of water and collecting the acetylene up here. So in here we have C2H2. What else do we have? So this was bubbling up through here. This is water. We have acetylene gas and we also have water vapor, water in the gas state. So the total pressure there, according to Dalton's law, is the partial pressure of the acetylene plus the partial pressure of the water. Do we know any of those values? Yeah. We're, we're told right here that the total pressure is 738. And then they saved us the trouble of looking up the vapor pressure of water. The vapor pressure of water is 21 torr. So the total pressure, 738 torr, is equal to the pressure of the acetylene plus 21 torr. I'm not very organized in how I'm doing this this morning. So then finding the pressure of the acetylene is a matter of taking 738 and subtracting 21. So the pressure of the acetylene is 717. Why do we care about that? We 
we want to use the ideal gas law to figure out how much acetylene is in here. The ideal gas law allows us to calculate the number of moles. We have the formula. If we know the moles of acetylene, we can calculate the number of grams. But the ideal gas law needs a pressure. If we use the total pressure, we're going to get the number of gas molecules, not just the acetylene, but also the water. So we need the pressure of just the acetylene to calculate moles of acetylene. Otherwise, we'll get moles of total gas, and that's not what we're looking for. So there's our pressure. Um, is that a good pressure for plugging into the ideal gas law? No, we want atmospheres. So one atmosphere over 760 torr. 717 divided by 760. Bless you. 0 0.943. And then I'm going to stick in two more digits to avoid rounding errors. Um, they give us the volume. Uh, 523 milliliters. Is that a good unit for the ideal gas law? No. So that's equal to 0.523 liters. Um, what else do we need? PV equals NRT. We've got P and V. We need the temperature. Temperature in Kelvin. So we're given the temperature in uh, Celsius, of course, 23 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which is 296.15 Kelvin. I'm just going to do my rearranging up here. PV equals NRT. I want N by itself, so I'm going to divide by RT on both sides. So those guys cancel out, and I get the number of moles is equal to PV over RT. So N equals PV over RT. So we've got the um, pressure, 0.94342 atmospheres. And the volume is 0 0.523 liters. And that's divided by the ideal gas constant, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times the temperature in Kelvin, 296.15 Kelvin. Let me get out the calculator. That's a 9. I guess that looks like a 9. 0.94342. Times 0.523 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 296.15. Gives us our number of moles, 0 0.0203. I can tell by looking at the numbers in this calculation that it's going to have three sig figs. This is not my final answer, so I'm going to write down two more digits to avoid rounding errors. And there's my number of moles. That many moles of acetylene. Now, we need to know the molar mass of acetylene. So um, I'm not going to write that down. Um, I'll just say it is 2 times 12.01 plus 2 times 1.008, 26.036. So 26.036 grams per mole. times point zero two zero three zero three and we come up with point five two nine grams.
down there in the corner. Any questions? Yes? Why did I multiply by 26? Because that's the molar mass of C2H2. Yeah. Because we get moles, but then the question is asking for grams. And this is, this is a very typical type of a question. It involves, you, it involves doing several different things, right? We have to think about the partial pressure of the gas. We need to use the ideal gas law and convert units in that. And then we need to take that answer and convert it to grams. So lots of steps. This isn't something that you can just memorize a formula of how to do it. Because there'd be like 5,000 of those to cover all the possibilities of what could show up on an exam. So we have to go for understanding and seeing why and being able to think about it. When you're able to think about stuff and put things together, you can do almost anything. So it's worth the struggle to persist until it starts to make sense. Any other questions? Here's another one. Yeah, question. Why do they use, why do they call it acetylene? Acetylene instead of ethyne? Um, that's a good question. In organic nomenclature, there are um, um, IUPAC names, the official name, which would be ethyne. Um, but then there are also some common names that are still in use. And so that makes organic chemistry extra fun because a lot of things have a couple of different names that are used frequently. So it's kind of like a nickname. But it is exactly the same thing. Here's another one. A um, common way to make hydrogen gas in the laboratory is to place a metal such as zinc in hydrochloric acid. And that's the illustration we saw earlier. Hydrochloric acid reacts with the metal to produce a gas collected over water. Suppose a student carries out this reaction, collects a total of 154.4 milliliters of gas at a pressure of 742 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What mass of hydrogen gas in milligrams does the student collect? The previous question gave us the vapor pressure of water. This one does not. It doesn't say anything about the vapor pressure of water. So what we need to know is that any time it says collected over water, there will be vapor pressure of water, and you have to subtract that from the pressure, the total pressure. So this temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius. We're going to go back to the table and look up the pressure. And if this, if vapor pressures are needed on an exam, you'll be given either the specific one you need or a table where you can look it up. So at 25 degrees, the vapor pressure is 23.78. 23.78, 23.78, I'm going to write it up here, pH2O, 23.78 millimeters of mercury. So this is a very similar problem, isn't it? We have a volume of gas, we have a total pressure and a temperature, and we're asked for a mass. So we need to find the pressure of the hydrogen gas. We have the pressure of the water. So the pressure of the hydrogen gas, which is what we need, is going to equal the total pressure minus the vapor pressure of water. It's not a hard calculation, but it's one that students sometimes just forget to do. Units are so pesky. 23.78 millimeters of mercury. <clears throat> 742 minus 23.78. 
Calculator says 718.22. Um, how many significant figures does that have? Well, it's got five digits, but are they all significant? No. This one is a whole number, but it's not an exact number. And so this has uncertainty in the ones place. When we subtract, we're looking at the place value of the uncertainty. So this result also has uncertainty in the ones place. That's our last significant figure. I want to keep the 0 0.22, though, to avoid rounding errors. So again, we're going to be calculating moles of gas, and that is N equals PV over RT. So we need that pressure in um, atmospheres. So one thing, um, you know, a lot of 1A students like to do, and I like to do it myself, is to just stick that conversion in here. So 718 over 760. And it saves you all the writing down of intermediate values. So 718.22 divided by 760 is going to give us the pressure in atmospheres. And we can just lump all these things together. Milliliters, hopefully by now you're comfortable with converting those to liters in your head. If not, go ahead and write it out. Um, but 154, we just move the decimal point three places to the left because we're dividing by 1,000. So 0.1544 liters. Um, R is always the same liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin and the temperature 25 well um, 25 plus 273 is 298.15 Kelvins so I did some shortcuts here um, if you're showing your work like on an exam question, I would like to see this part, um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, this is really the minimum of showing your work. I want to see what numbers you were multiplying and dividing. Um, so I've got 718.22 divided by 760. Um, times 0.1544 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298.15. And I'm getting a very small number. It's okay. 00596. How many sig figs is this result going to have? Looking through here, this one's 3 exact, 4 four, three. So it's going to have three, right? And then two more. And that's moles. Are we done? No. We, we found moles of hydrogen gas. We need milligrams. So we need that many moles. And I sometimes have students ask me, well, should I put that in scientific notation? You certainly can. I am absolutely fine. In my book, scientific notation is never wrong. Um, kind of my guideline of when I do it is if I have to count the zeros, I put it in scientific notation. That one, I can see that there's two zeros, and so I'm OK with leaving that alone. What's the molar mass of hydrogen? You're going to have to say something. Four? Two. Because it's hydrogen, not helium. So two, because it's two times 1.008, right? You guys are not awake, are you? It's okay. 2.016 grams per mole 
That's going to give me grams. What unit is requested? Milligrams. So to convert that, uh, mil oh, I don't want milligrams on the bottom. Milligrams on top, milli means 10 to the minus 3. Um, so my units are going to cancel out. So I've got my moles and I multiply by 2.016 and divide by 10 to the minus 3 and I come up with 12.0 12.0 milligrams of hydrogen gas. Any questions?